We are back, Bear Bets Podcast. Myself, the Bear, Chris Fleek, and Jeff Schwartz, my co-host, uh, Sammy P. and Will Hill will join us in a little, a little bit to uh, break down the gambling group chat and uh, go over a lot of the, the games from last week, this week, uh, trade deadline reaction, a uh, lot, of, lot of stuff covered, awards markets. But yeah, it, what a an unusual trade deadline. It felt like there were a lot more trades, yeah. maybe some more players of significance that were that were traded and like i said um, maybe that doesn't necessarily affect the odds per se in, in in odds moving one way or another but it does affect opinions of, of, of teams and, and how you feel about certain teams but yeah i can remember like was it eric dickerson when he got traded from the rams to the colts like that was like the first like big like draft deadline trade felt like like, like it's unlike the baseball trade what, deadline what year was that by the way 80 Oh yeah, I certainly remember that. Yeah, Maybe. I'm just dating myself. I'm a I'm a dinosaur. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to now I'm gonna have to Google Eric Eric Dick. Wall Wall Bear does that this weekend, guys. And the NFL is getting the point. I love the NFL. I love it. I watch it more. I don't watch it more in college football. I just like the NFL more. Um, but Bear is getting tough to consume the NFL at the moment because the quarterback situation in the NFL. Not to be a Debbie Downer and start the show. We 80, start 87, it looks like. Oh, I was alive. 87. Good, nice. Yeah, yeah, 80, um, 80, 80, yeah, it couldn't have been 83 because that was like his first or second year in the league. Miami and Kansas City play. So it's two of us versus Mahomes early Sunday. Great. Start Sunday off well. We end Sunday with Allen, with Allen and, and Burrow. We also have Hertz and Prescott Sunday afternoon. In between that, can I list you the quarterbacks playing the National Football League this weekend? Ready? It's whoever the Rams are playing and Jordan Love. Who? I'm babe. Sam Howell, Mac Jones, Baker Mayfield, CJ Stroud, Clayton Toon, PJ Walker. Uh, is it Tyler or Tyson Badgett? Is it uh, whoever? Yeah, mm -hmm. It's one of those two. Derek Carr. Here's a good one. Geno Smith, Lamar Jackson. We'll take that one. Um, uh, Josh Dobbs and Heineke. Uh, Gardner Minshew and uh, and uh, and uh, Bryce Young. Uh, maybe Daniel Jones. I don't know. Aiden O'Connell, and then on Monday night we have uh, we have Herbert and uh, and Wilson. Zach, who hum babe, and and we and we wonder why these games are total thirty seven and a <laughs> like half, thirty eight. That is a, I mean, again, the sandwich of the Chiefs and Dolphins early, which is from Germany, which is nice, and then the end when you get the Cowboys and Eagles and you get the Bengals and the Bills. But in between, buddy, it is gross in the NFL right now with these quarterbacks. It it, it really is, and. Last week was so rough with the, the quarterback injuries. Just to I me, mean, Kirk Cousins won stinks. It, it, it stinks because he was playing, he was playing well, and that team had a chance to make the playoffs in a really watered down, dilapidated, dilapidated uh, NFC. But what I love about you is you don't shy away from a lot of games. things. Oh, I love, oh, I love the art. The art that we're getting, we get some Arby's in a few minutes. That's what I love too about you. <laughs> you, 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 you push, you push us some food in my direction. I love it. But what I also love about you is you're not phased by these quarterbacks. You take them as your wagers. Well, that's what you have to do. You have to do that. You, you, you can't know well, the, they're the better, the better quarterback, better team to go to win. It's not how this ridiculous league works. Let's start with your wagers for the week before we get to gambling group chat. We have our best bets. We have our survivor as well. I'm still alive in survivor. You're still alive in survivor in one of yours. So, Let's start with your with uh two you have two bets so far that we're gonna talk about this week. You ready? The first one, Colts at Panthers, Panthers getting three points, totals 44. Indianapolis is three and five this season. They lost the Saints last weekend at home. Colts were four and four against the spread. The Panthers got their first win this season against the Texans. It was 13 to 12. Woo! And you didn't go to the game. You could I did have not been go. you could have been there to go witness history. I had money on the Panthers, though. I'll take that. They're one five and one against the spread. They went on Sunday, it was the first cover of the season. Who do you got here? Buddy? I'm going to have money on the Panthers again this weekend. I you took, should. I took the plus three against the Colts. You and, should. And it's it's a Colts defense that's made everybody look uh, fairly fairly competent offensively all year long. Um, got the first win. Maybe things take off a little bit here, and if get Bryce Young could feel a little bit better about himself. It, the, the the Colts can't stop anybody. A little terrible in defense. So I, I, and Gardner Minshew, like you just, Gardner Minshew is so up and down. Mm -hmm. He just good a week, bad a week, good a week, bad a week, good a week, bad a week. He played okay last weekend. This feels like another again. Look, not not to not to to shame my wonderful city of Charlotte, but Bank of America Stadium but, is not but, known, but, but, is but not known as a uh, high energy facility. 
So the Colts have to bring their own energy to play in this game. Like this favors the Panthers to play in the stadium with just no one's in the stadium. It's it's like it's like the old um we, we used to have, make fun about the old Jefferson Pilot noon kickoff in like the ACC, where like there'd be like sleepy crowd, yeah. third full, big favorite would go in there, and all of a sudden you look up in the third quarter in yes. the game and they're trailing. Yes. So, so it's, it's, feels it's, like it's, it feels like a, a new yes. a JP noon yeah. ACC On, game. Now it's like on Raycom in Charlotte. Right, they're, exactly. They're, yeah, the, the Raycom ACC yeah. game. Other way, it, didn't, it, used, it used to also be the Big Ten would put before big noon kickoff, they put like Purdue Northwestern. In that slot, in that early in the early kickoff slot, you feel the same way. This feels the same way. Like, take the underdog here, plus the three points, Panthers off a win. I like it. All right, next wager here. You have, excuse me, we have the Vikings at the Falcons. The Falcons are five-point favorite. Total 37 and a half. Vikings are four and four. They've covered four of those eight games. They're without Kirk Cousins, we know, has Achilles injury and had surgery out for the season. Uh, we believe. Josh Dobbs, who just got traded for, is going to start this weekend, I think. No, I think you're going to go with Hall, aren't they? You're going to go with Hall? Okay. I, how are you going to bring in Dobbs to start right out, right off the bat here? I think they're going to go with Hall, aren't they? The point is it doesn't matter. Yeah, I was going to say, it the doesn't matter. Four, or four and four. They're two and six against the spread. Tyler, uh, Taylor Heineke is starting for them at quarterback. Right. I don't care who the <laughs> I don't care who the quarterbacks are in this game. This is just a play against Atlanta in a boring, predictable kind of offense that has all these weapons that they don't use them. Maybe Heineke does give them a better chance to win, but I'm hoping this line climbs. I, like, I took five because I didn't want to have to maybe go, maybe go the wrong way, and I'm taking four and a half. I, I'm hoping maybe we get five and a half or six by game time with the with the Vikings quarterback uh, indecisiveness. And, and now maybe that the fact that the Falcons have made the move to Heineke, maybe people will view that as a positive. I do. But this is a this is a play on the Vikings defense. Uh, defensively, they're a really good unit, yeah. and I think this offense can be certainly kept in check. So I grabbed the uh, I grabbed the Vikings plus five. What would the line have been in Cousins played? I see. I think it opened at, at Vikings favored by one, which still feels way too low. Mm-hmm. Cousins Vi- healthy. Vikings wouldn't be favored by one in Atlanta if Cousins played. Well, it maybe it maybe Atlanta two and a half. Really, Atlanta would be favored. Atlanta's not good. I know they're not, but it, the the, val, the market has overvalued. It says here that it says here it opened at a look ahead, or someone was was it one Vikings favored by one? Others look ahead, or whether it was the, there's there's no way there's no way the Vikings would have been favored in Minnesota. I don't I don't think they, I don't think like they were barely favored in Green Bay. I know, but I think things change because they put they look they look much better. And the Vi- and the Falcons are just the, the, like, the, the Falcons have been a team this year where the lines have made. No sense. They, they have been overvalued. Sorry, the look ahead in the summer was Vikings favored by one. And summer. then the one last week was Falcons minus one. Yeah, yeah. yeah there we go. Okay, yeah. Because um, I would say like the, the the Falcons, to me, they're, they're at the bottom third in DVOA and like everything. They're not, I don't think they're coached terribly well. The Vikings, to your point, have, have played better football recently. Isn't it funny how sometimes the quarterback, like, you're just like, whatever, man. Just fading the Falcons. <laughs> Yes, and that's yeah, it's usually worked well. Like, like that was another because the NFL yeah. last week with the Titans. Oh, the Titans traded him. They traded that. Oh, oh it's the Titans. It was, it was Will Levis. I, I was, like that was another because it's the NFL game. I love taking Vrabel as a home dog, and I passed on it for that exact reason. I regret doing it, even though I was I had a good. Win but the week. beauty of in-game wagering is you knew right away. Well, Will Levis. You knew sling. right away, and you were able to get down on on the Titans pretty quickly in that game. Will Levis can sling it. I know we're filming on Thursday, so we can't talk about the result of Steelers Titans. But I'm kind of curious how Levis plays on the road in a short week. That's, that's yes, we'll yeah, and that. and with the, the Steelers and that defense having a game film now on yeah. him, the Titans need a little bit of explosion in that offense. That changes how I feel about. Need the a lot. Need a lot of explosion in that. Well, offense. Let's recap the two wagers Bear just made here: Panthers plus three at home, hosting the Colts, and the Falcons on the road. Excuse me, the Vikings on the road getting five points against the Falcons. We'll have our best bet for you in a few minutes. But first, it's Gambling Group Chat. We talk about MVP votes. We talk about the state of the NFL. Do the trade deadlines change anything on the wagers that we like or or dislike? Uh, Sammy's uh, feeling good about some some futures he has. We'll do that next. It's me, Bear, Sammy, and Will Hill. Here's Gambling Group Chat. Time again for the Gambling Group Chat. Myself, Jeff, Sammy P., and Will Hill. Uh, NFL trade deadline this week. Obviously, the books don't overreact or really move uh, the market based on these trades for one players. But uh, Sammy, was was there a move out there that that maybe 
triggered a player or made you think differently uh, about a team from what you initially were thinking prior to the deadline? Like you look, you're looking at play, getting a uh, Bears to make the playoff uh, bet now. Now that uh, Montez <laughs> Sweat is lining up for the Bears. No, I think we're good on that. Um, I also think we're going to cash our under bet that we made in our one of our first shows. I think we bet Chicago under five and a half wins, and that should be okay given the quarterback situation. I will say this. I think this is a good time to reassess your ability to buy more San Francisco stock. This would be the time not only to buy low because they've lost a handful of games in a row, but they hit the buy now. A chance to get healthier. Remember, Trent Williams has been out for a while, their left tackle. Debo's been hurt. They've had some other issues on the defensive side of the ball. But when healthy, I still think, Bear, that is the highest power-rated team in the NFL. And the thought of being an NFC quarterback, whether it be Dak Prescott or Jalen Hurts or whoever, going up against a defensive line with Bosa and Chase Young is terrifying. That team, when healthy, if healthy, is still, to me, the best team in the NFC. So you could find... Five and a quarter on San Francisco to win the Super Bowl. I think that's a better bet than NFC because you could always get off it. You could play the other side in the Super Bowl if San Francisco gets there. This is a good time to buy because everybody's kind of down on them right now. But with those two guys on the D-line, that is a terrifying scenario for any quarterback in the NFC. I, I couldn't agree more with you. I, I was thinking the same thing and uh, having – stuff early for earlier in the season uh and you're you like you don't want to you, you don't want to get the the worst the worst of the number and everyone oh, i need to buy more san francisco four to one for and now is the the rare time where you actually do get a good opportunity to get a little a little bit better of a price on the 49ers who uh, i agree I, I still think are the best team uh in the nfc will any uh post trade deadline thoughts on any teams that you might be looking to uh maybe make a play on here no, I wish I got to go first because I would have said basically what Sammy said. Well, the one caveat being I, I'm a little concerned about the 49ers defense. By the way, the second place San Francisco 49ers, which is, is hard to believe. I mean, they were like the greatest team on earth a few weeks ago. And that Dallas game seems like a long time ago. But uh, they haven't played well on defense. Young will help. Getting healthier will, will, will help. You know, Williams, Samuel. I'm not that worried about Purdy. I, I think the week off will do him well. I mean, it's, look, he's still a young quarterback. He probably wasn't the great player everyone made him out to be when he's undefeated, but he's not, you know, th there's a, the truth is usually in between. And I, I, I'm not worried about Purdy. I'm more worried about the defense, but I don't know. I know, I know you're not adverse to laying a price. If, if the shoe fits bear is minus two fifty or so for the division. Is that coming into a range where it's playable for you? It, it's so funny because I was going to follow up with you on that saying how Sammy had mentioned to win the Super Bowl uh, and maybe not win the NFC. But when, when you talk, when you, as soon as you said second place, San Francisco 49ers, like that triggered a bet for me. Like I, I saw 250, I laid it in a heartbeat. Like yeah. they're, they're still the best team in that division. I Seattle should have lost last week to Cleveland. They're not a good team. They're not a great, they're, they're, they're okay. They're, they're okay. They're, 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 they're fine. But they're not going to win that division, Jeff. No, they're not. I think the, the two tr the two takeaways from the trade deadline for me was like Washington is obviously fire sale and Ron Rivera is out of there, right? They're going to hire someone else to have a new quarterback. They'll do the whole thing next year. But that Seattle thinks they're a playoff contender with the Leonard Williams trade. Like they're – Well, a playoff well, contender no, sorry, in the NFC, yes. I, I mean a division winner. Not They're in the playoffs, I think. But division winner with that trade. And they're not. They, 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 they should have beat the Bengals. They didn't. They the next weekend was the Cardinals game. They barely snuck by, and then they should have lost to the Browns. Like they're they're an okay team, not great. And everyone's paying on the 49ers. The 49ers will be fine, guys. They're gonna be okay. I'm not sure Chase Young, to be fair, changed my opinion about them. Like defensively, they're not as good. They're doing too much. Um, they're just kind of not letting their guys get after it. And then offensively, when everyone's back healthy, they'll they'll look better. I, I don't think Chase Young to me changes how I feel about the Niners at all. The, Let me the, correct something real quick help. there. Uh, six to one, you can oh. get on San Francisco. I apologize. I said five and a quarter. Um, that was when I was looking last Sunday. I took some notes for the show. So you can get six to one at multiple sports books on San Francisco to win the Super Bowl if you're so inclined. And then one more quick nugget. The only disappointment of the trade deadline was that Minnesota didn't get Jameis Winston. How much fun would that have been? We could have just bet Minnesota <laughs> over the rest of the season with Winston and Jefferson and Addison, and then when Winston doesn't throw touchdowns, he's throwing pick sixes. I thought that was a huge opportunity to bring in a quarterback that could have made that so much fun in the Twin Cities, and then they go ahead and trade for Josh Dodd. Boo! 
But but for Minnesota, though, here's the thing is you want to be competitive but not win, right? So like Josh Jobs is that perfect guy for you where you're competitive, but you don't win because you have you need a quarterback, right? Like you need someone for the future. This is a great draft for that. You don't want to again, you're you're four and four, you're in the playoff hunt. So I think you want to appear competitive and you want to give your chance, you know, your, your players a, a chance to win each week. And Josh Dobbs is good enough to make that happen, right? You know, probably won't win a lot of games with him at quarterback, but you still want to sort of lose and draft in the top 10 if possible. I I took the Vikings this week plus the five. I know, Will, Will, you're shaking your head at me. You're shaking your no. head at Jeff. Because we were on th- – I'm shaking or my head. Both, you, both, all, both I'm, is I'm acceptable. A, I'm a Vikings fan, and three weeks ago, they were one and four, sure. and we said, you know what? Trade Cousins, come up with a fake injury for Cousins. And can you only imagine if Cousins got <laughs> traded to the Jets and he ruptured his Achilles on the Jets for, you know, the second quarterback in five <laughs> weeks get or whatever. But now the Vikings are in no man's land. You're going to win six or seven games. You already have four. So this idea that you're going to be picking in the top one or two to get May or Caleb, you're just going to be in no man's land. Like picking in the top, you know, be, let's say they get the eighth pick somewhere between five and 10. Okay. That's better than picking. Uh, I don't know, in the 20s or 15, but they're not really a contender. They're not going to be picking high. They're just, they're sort of in purgatory. I, I don't really know, you know, what the plan is. I, I think they should have just probably traded Cousins earlier. The, the thing is they're playing well. They they would have made the playoffs probably easily if Cousins stayed healthy because Flores yeah. has the defense playing well. Um, Addison's a stud. You get Jefferson back. Cousins was actually playing well. So to me, this is just typical. It's no man's land here for Minnesota. You're not looking forward to, to Bo Nix, Vikings quarterback, pick 12 of, of the 2024 NFL draft? No? I'm, no? I'm looking <laughs> at the mock that? drafts. After you get the top two, I don't know, Sanders, Nix. Uh, Shadur Sanders. Just, Shadur Sanders. Uh, you got, tough. Yeah, it's not tough. great. Huh? Penix? You got, you got some, some Penix there? Penix ain't going in the first round. No? You don't no. think so? Penix ain't going Friday either. What 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 about uh, what about Daniels at LSU? Would you take Daniels at LSU there at, at 12 or 11? I think you would take that, right? Seems high. I guess the Vikings. Look, here's I the think thing about a, the NFL, right? Like, drop off. Here's the thing about the NFL, though. Like, you need a quarterback, right? And so, the the is it too high thing? Like, you just need one. And so, yeah, you but might be a, too high, but you need a quarterback. You gotta wait for next year. You but it's a, a wasted pick, though. I, the 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 flame out bust factor is so high with you these guys. I agree. I, I agree with what you're saying, but you can't win the NFL without one of those guys. So you just keep trying to get one till you get one is my opinion on how that should work. Yeah, but you go wait for wait for day two then to take someone. Like there are guys out there that are gonna pan out. Like don't pass up a, the, a, a maybe they, they a basically general. have it they basically had a day two pick for the last five years, days, eight years, whatever it's been since they had cousins and they never got over the hurdle. Like you need you typically need a day one guy to 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 win the Super Bowl, like to get over that hump. Brady's the outlier. Take him out, right? Like Look at the best quarterbacks in the NFL. They're all they're everyone, mostly day one. Everyone guys. was excited Perks. when Justin Fields was taking what twelfth overall. Well, we knew. Well, we, no, no, it was a great pick. Remember, Zach Wilson was a great pick. <laughs> no, we, we talked about this when Zach Wilson got drafted. Me and you. But, but no, that wasn't the narrative. All these guys were great picks when they got taken. No one wants to be honest and say these guys are not going to work. Oh, I do. Uh, in the NFL, Desmond Ritter not going to work in the NFL now benched. Good. I'm going to, and that's why. I, 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 I know he's, I think he's got concussed last week, though. Did right? he get concussed? Right. I thought, I thought he said, I thought they, I, heard, but, I heard they got benched, but he did but get concussed. I think it's, I think both are sort of true. Like he, this week, I feel like he did. They're like, you're not playing anymore, which made no sense. I, the Falcons treating him like he was a first round pick and just kept him out there because that's what happens, right? If you're a first round pick and you struggle, you keep playing and playing and playing. Third round pick, get someone else there. Heineke is good enough to just sort of get you by, right? You're not going to win a lot. Uh, you're probably not going to lose a lot, just sort of in the middle in the NFL. Um, so it makes sense that the quarterback playing this league right now is just atrocious guys. I don't know how you wait these games, like the quarter it's, it's a bad time to, to, to raise your own quarterbacks right now. I, 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 I hope people in, in survivor take the Falcons this week because I, they're, I, I like Minnesota. We'll see, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, boy, what else have we got here? Are you guys? How about Kansas City and and uh, and the Dolphins? I I think people are going to jump off the Kansas City bandwagon way too much after one game. They're six and two. They're the, they're the number one seed in the AFC right now. Still, I'm 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 on the Chiefs this weekend. Yeah, I, we, you and I talked about this before. I'm a, I'm on the Chiefs and uh, Sammy. I, I'm curious your take on uh, Miami Kansas City in, in Germany. We've kind of heard about the narrative all along. Like the Dolphins, these bullies, they. They beat up on the bad teams, and when they face a good team, they get punched back in the in the mouth, kind of like the Eagles did a couple of weeks. So you, you think that theme will be playing out, or you think that they can beat Kansas City? 
I wasn't going to lay two and a half, that's for sure. But when it got down to one and I had a couple outs looking me right in the face at minus 115 on the money line, I was like, yep, I'll throw that in the cart. Why not? I mean, this is Mahomes <laughs> against Tua. I, I think it's going to come down to whichever quarterback makes the bigger throws in the second and for the, uh, excuse me, the third and fourth quarter. I think it's a good buy low on the Chiefs. Concerns for sure about their receiver room. I mean, their best receiver might be that rookie, Rice, but. If Mahomes and Kelsey are healthy at a pick'em, I'm going to lay 115 to win the game. I'd much rather lay 115 than lay one. Most games don't land one, but if it lands 21-20, I'd hate myself. So I went money line. Yeah, we're going to go four for four here. I like the Chiefs. I mean, we know that Kansas City's not good at covering these big numbers when it's seven or ten. They just don't have the appetite, the desire to cover. But hey, Mahomes, if you're getting points or just laying basically zero and you have to win the game. Uh, historically, that's been a pretty good bet. I, I could just, we could throw out last week. It was what five turnovers. Mahomes was sick. I think that's just one that, you know what it's the NFL things happen. They'd beaten Denver 900 times in a row. So uh, Spagnuolo versus Tua is, is interesting. Spagnuolo is one of, the, one of the better defensive coordinators. Can, maybe he can throw some stuff at Tua that, you know, confuses him. This should be a fun game. This is just, this is an awesome game. You, you know, if, if you're on the West coast, this is an early, uh, wake up call here to watch this one. But to me, this is the chiefs. I understand if you want to throw Miami into teasers, if it's one and a half up to seven and a half should be a competitive game. But like you said, I mean, uh, Miami, let's see him pick on somebody their own size. They blow out all these bad teams. Let's see, see him beat somebody good. I think they haven't earned that benefit of the doubt. Kansas city has. But Mahomes too, obviously both getting a lot of MVP talk, even though I think I feel the MVP of the Miami dolphins is Tyreek Hill. And uh, I, I would also, I made the argument with you guys this week, earlier this week, like, should we be betting Joe Burrow to win MVP? I mean, it isn't the definition of like, like what, what is more of a definition of MVP than guy, guy has a bad calf, can't move. He stinks. Team stinks too. Oh, by the way, now he's healthy. He can move. He's really good again. And the team is really good and might be the, the second best team in, in the AFC. Now, so I, I grabbed some Burrow with 22 to one. Uh, to win MVP, I, I, uh, Jeff, and you. I, I like I, I like that because I think they're going to keep winning, and they're going to you know all our wages that we have for Bengals under and Bengals no playoffs probably aren't going to hit, and maybe that's a way to to make to make back on it. Um, I'll just say this is an MVP vote. Obviously, it tends to be quarterback of best team of of the conference, which the Bengals probably won't get there, but it's still possible. But isn't this the year that AJ Brown or Tyreek Hill win an MVP? Like Tyreek Hill might have two thousand yards receiving. He's on pace for over that right now. If this is not the year when you have a little bit of a lull in quarterback play, right? It's just not as good at the top as it's been in previous years. Is this the year to put some money on Tyreek Hill? Look, I, I don't understand why a wide receiver of maybe the one seed in the AFC, but you they win this weekend, they they have a tiebreaker against Kansas City. That to me feels like a good wager. Like Terry Kill to offensive player of the year, we've talked about for many months now. I think Sammy has a great ticket on for offensive player of the year, but for MVP, I I, I don't know why a wide receiver cannot win. And remember now, guys, the voting is tiered. It used to just be one vote for one player. Now it's one through five. So there's a different way for someone to get to the MVP vote than having to get every single single uh, every single first place vote. Let's speak this into existence, please, because if I cash Tyree Kill at 125 to 1 for MVP, we will throw the biggest party that has ever been seen. I mean, <laughs> Arby's for 2, everyone. 2,000 yards, 2,000 yards, 20 touchdowns on a team that wins 11 or 12 games. He's their best player. It's not Tua, it's Tyree Kill. And I'm looking at the range right now 20 to 1 at DraftKings, 40 to 1 at MGM, 50 to 1 at FanDuel. You know, if you want to jump on this party for Tyree Kill, by all means, but don't bet 20 when you can bet a 50. I mean, price is so important in these markets because all of these books have different liabilities. And the price at gas station A is not necessarily the same price at gas station B. Economics. Yeah, there we go. I just, I, I don't think it. I can get there with a non quarterback winning. Je I think Jeff's point hurts the idea of a non quarterback winning because I think these voters who are all analytically driven and they think, hey, the quarterback's the most important, which it is. And when you throw the word valuable in there, I think it's just a way to give Hill, hey, we'll throw him a bone. We'll give him a second place vote, a third place. But maybe he places here and finishes second or third winning. I just, I don't know if I see it. And man, Looking at these odds, I, I don't say this a lot. There's to me, there's nothing to bet. You got four guys, five to one or shorter. Like the hold on these is just too much. I mean, two of four to one, Hurts four to one, Mahomes plus four fifty, Lamar plus five fifty. How do you have four guys? You know, I five been to any one of those or shorter. Mm. Tough. It's really tough. 
and, that, and that's kind of why I looked, I, I saw Burrow. I'm like, at least that's like, at least I could feel okay about, yeah. right. about betting that having a Tyreek Hill ticket already uh, in, in my pocket, like we do, we do from earlier in the year. I just hate the, 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 the narrative though. Just like, okay, we'll give MVP to the quarterback and we'll give offensive player of the year to uh, the, the best skill well, wide receiver or running. I, I just hate that narrative. It, it, what, I was thinking about when, when well, Jeff said the, the voting first, and then, Will, you said the, the voting. Like, I wonder, though, if that might help Tyreek, if he just accumulates yeah. a lot of these second-place votes. Could and be. then, like, maybe there's a difference a difference on, like, what quarterback people vote for. Like, like maybe that could ultimately wind up helping him. It will certainly be interesting to uh, to, to see how that how that plays out. So... I would say um, one more thing on this. I think ooh. it'll be decided in the second half of the seat. Like it's wide open. It's going to be who plays best the, yeah. the last like four, six, eight weeks or whatever. It's not whoever we think it, it is now is sort of irrelevant. Somebody can make a late charge and win this thing. I think two games of the week, obviously. Well, I shouldn't say obviously because the Kansas city yeah. Miami game in Germany is pretty, pretty damn good. But uh, two of the afternoon games on Sunday afternoon, Dallas, Philadelphia, Buffalo, Cincinnati, uh, we hit on uh, the, the Bengals there quite a bit. And uh, this number opened Buffalo minus one and a half. And now it's, uh, and now I'm seeing two and a half pop up at the, uh, your prominent offshore books. Uh, the, the, this, I, so I, it, I don't, I don't understand this line. I'm be I was going to say, it people. felt like one way traffic all along from the start went on, on Cincinnati and uh, the, the, the flip in the betting market. is the case. What, what, what's the case for Buffalo in this game? Like, I don't know. I'm just asking, like, I, I like, seriously, what, what, the Bengals are who they are. We watch them play the Niners. They're the team they've been the last two or three years, right? They're back. They're fully healthy. They're ready to go. Their defense looked looked improved after the bye, which there was some. It wasn't as good as the previous years, but obviously it looked it looked better. Joe Burrow's healthy. He's back to being Joe Burrow. What are we getting from Buffalo? We don't know each week. Each week Buffalo is this, you know, up and down, up and down, up and down. We know what the Bengals are. Like to me, guys, I, I'm all over the Bengals this week. Maybe I'm being a, a, a Joe Schmo here and, and, and taking the public side of this one, but I, I don't know what the case is for 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 Buffalo. The Bengals are better. They played better against them last year in the snow in Buffalo. I mean, yeah, Josh Allen could have a Josh Allen game and just be Josh Allen, and they win for this reason. But Buffalo's defense. Has not been a good as good with the injuries, uh, and offensively they're just so up and down. So I'm under a field goal, man, all over the Bengals here. Yeah, it'd be Cincy or nothing for me. I guess the case for Buffalo is just you don't want to be too reactionary. Where if you play this game a couple of weeks ago, Buffalo's favored by three, but hey, things change, circumstances change, and now Burrow's obviously a much different player, much better player. Um, not, and, and you make a good point, Jeff. Not only did did Cincy bury them in Buffalo in that playoff game last year in the divisional round, they were winning the Hamlin game. I think they were up seven in driving. Yeah. So I mean, I know it was only one quarter, and, and it gets overshadowed obviously by what happened to Hamlin. But Cincy was dominating that game too. So to me, it'd be Cincy your pass. I, I agree. I wrote this up for Fox actually yesterday. You know, I do the blurbs for Thursday, Sunday, and Monday night, which is a different conversation for a different day. But uh, I wrote over 48 and a half because, you know, one of the most key totals in the NFL is 49. And we've had some duds, guys. We've had some bad quarterbacks on Sunday night this year. Mac Jones, Kenny Pickett, Jimmy G, Zach Wilson, Terod Taylor, Tyson Bajan. We get Allen and Burrow. Uh, is this the game we've been waiting for for a month? Like the 34-30 yes. shootout, the back and forth, up and down? I mean, this total has gotten blasted. It opened 46 and a half, which was way too low. It's starting to crawl up to 50. I hate saying I love over 49 and a half when I literally just wrote on Fox, bet over 48 <laughs> and a half. But, you know, I'm not going to nickel and dime you. Like, I don't hate the over at 49 and a half. I just, I think you always have to be aware of where totals were and where they are. but. I mean, if this is in the 30s, it's not going to matter if it's 48 or 49 or 50. And and, and the other game, Dallas, Dallas and Philadelphia, that three and 47 pretty much uh, across the board. The same kind of theory there, Sammy, uh, over 47 to be in that it's under that number of 49. I actually just think this is a future game. Um, you know, Dallas right now to win the NFC East is plus 160, plus 170. Clearly, Philadelphia is the better team right now through the first part of the season. But as we've discussed on Bear Bets for about a month now, this is that part of the schedule. I've got it right here. Dallas at home, then the bye, at Kansas City, home against Buffalo, home against San Francisco, at Dallas, at Seattle. Holy cow. I mean, that is 
That is one of the toughest stretches we will see in the NFL. Now, they're good enough to survive it, but if Dallas wins this week, Philadelphia goes through that murderer's row. I think if you're liking Dallas this weekend, you look at Dallas plus money to win the division. Yeah, I, I like Dallas plus three. It's, it's funny, Philly's a weird seven and one team where they just dominated Miami. But other than that, I mean, Washington gave them a tough game every week. They're they're right around the number. It, it's funny. You got to get the best number. They're a perfect example of why you have to get the best number because they're always um, in that range of where their line closes. I just don't know if Hertz is healthy. He had a knee brace on after the Miami game that Sunday night a couple weeks ago. Last week, one carry for seven yards. If his legs aren't a factor, uh, especially against that pass rush for Dallas, which just destroyed Stafford, basically just you know ended their season uh, for for the Rams. Um, to me, you're going to give me three here. This could easily land on three, but I'll take the points here with Dallas. I don't know what the live bet opportunity would be, but Dallas is one style of team. They're a front running team, right? If they're up big at any point in any game, take Dallas, right? I mean, they we've seen it throughout the season is when they get up big, even big in you know, in the NFL's 14 points, right? 10 points yeah. even sometimes. Like when their pass rush is allowed to do what their pass rush needs to do, when the pressure is off Dak Prescott having to be the entire offense, they're a much different team. When they're down, or when the, the score is sort of close and they can't just rush the passer and, and there's a little more pressure on Dak Prescott, they're not the same team. So I don't know if that translates to a live bet opportunity because the Cowboys obviously would be a favorite if they get up by 14 points. But, you know, the Eagles might not be that team to test. But that's the way I play the Cowboys. Like, like if they get up big in any game, the other team's not coming back because they can rush the passer. There's just no opportunity for that. So in this game, that's sort of what I look at is if the Cowboys get up early, Cowboys probably end up winning the game. If they don't, they, they just they aren't going to come back against the Philly. And, and, and are the Cowboys maybe a little little Miami Dolphinish, where, where like kind of kind of like beat up on the on the bad teams, and then when they play someone well, good, kind of they they can't they, they the Cowboys offense line is much better than the Dolphins. Like they can punch you in the mouth when healthy, but McCarthy's play calling is atrocious. Like he is not a good play caller. He does not. Very nice. He, he does not. Was a Super Bowl winning head coach, Mike. And he and, and he, he looked up PFF for one whole offseason, so he's he knows how to use analytics now. <laughs> um, he just the offensive design doesn't match the players he has, especially up front, and it holds them back. And I wonder if it holds them back against a, a better coach team. Like that's the thing about why I thought the Rams might cover last weekend because Sean McVay is a well coached, you know, the well coached operation. They're just not as good as the Cowboys, obviously. So in, in a matchup like this, how much does coaching matter to you, right? How much does the Sirianni versus Mike McCarthy matter in this situation? Because Sirianni's going to be aggressive. He's going to go for it. He's going to, he's going to, he's balls to the wall. McCarthy at times, he never, sometimes he's conservative, sometimes he's not. You just don't know with McCarthy. Speaking of well coached teams, Monday night, we get two well coached teams the Los Angeles Chargers and Brandon Staley and the Jets, Robert Sala. The Jets actually have done a very good job. He, I'm, I'm I'm impressed with the job Robert Sala done this year. I I, 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 came, yeah. I came very, 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 very close to taking the Jets plus three, and now it's up to three and a half. I, I'm going to be. Bear, be, be honest. When you see those videos of Aaron Rodgers throwing the football before the game, it's just a little bit of inside. No, it's like none. Aaron Rodgers coming. The, we're, not coming. we're going nine and eight. We're going to be the seven seed. Rodgers coming back. And we're making that Super Bowl run. No, he's not. Come on, a little bit, not, a little, a little bit. Jet fan of you no, is a little bit excited. For that. No, no, no. There's no part of being a Jet fan <laughs> that has like optimistic excitement. Okay. That does not exist with the New York Jets. Optimism and excitement happens before the year, and then your season ends four plays into it when Aaron Rodgers ruptures his Achilles, or in the in the early in the first game of the year after coming off an AFC Championship game appearance, and Vinny Testaverde ruptures his Achilles in the first game of the year and your season is over. So that's what op it's like Red's quote from uh or or, or the the quote in Shawshank about right. hope being uh not hope hope is hope's a dangerous thing. Yeah. Optimism and excitement are dangerous things when you're Jets fans. But that being said, isn't it Jets or pass here, Will? Three and a half now? Can't you just dream for a second? I mean, what kind of what a story that would be if they do sneak in the playoffs nine and eight, and here comes Stop Rodgers it. and he actually plays. I actually don't think it's crazy that he plays. I think he's I think he's hell bent on playing. I I, I really wouldn't put it past him. Uh, that being said, who the hell are the Chargers to be laying three and a half on the road to anybody decent? <laughs> the Chargers have everybody hypnotized. I think it's two things. They have the cool uniforms, and they those are some great uniforms. Herbert's got the great arm, and when he gets to play the Bears, he looks unbelievable. I mean, what are we doing though? We're laying three and a half on the road with this team. To me, that. 
that's a ridiculous line. I think it, I thought it opened one, one and a half. And I was like, man, I don't know what to do with this. Yeah, it did. Maybe you like the half. Chargers at one. Maybe you tease the Jets when it's one and a half at three and a half. This is, this is a play on the Jets. J E T S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Can we also talk about Robert Sala? I mean, look, I don't want to continuously drag Dan Campbell, but Robert Sala has done a much better job given what he has. Yes. Than, than Dan Campbell and Robert Sala has gone all the way down to six to one, five fifty to win Coach of the Year. If this team really makes the playoff, yeah, he so it's it's Ooh. Campbell like I, two to I, one. I, gra- I grabbed him. I grabbed him at like eight, I think eighteen to one a few weeks ago. Wow, me mm. too. You're live there, buddy. And and look, I have McDaniel to win Coach of the Year, and I'm more scared of Robert Sala than I am of Dan Campbell. I mean, Campbell's got a really good team an awesome offense, a great offensive line, but they haven't really had any adversity. Robert Sala has done, in my opinion, the best coaching job to date through seven games to have that team four and three. Yep. Zach Wilson is it's the best coaching job in the NFL right now. Now Plus he's in New York the season that he has done a tremendous job moving things around. His defense is really yeah. freaking good to Rod Taylor had like eight passing yards last mm-hmm. week. I mean, Sala to me is the story in New York. His coaching job has been sensational and he is slowly crawling up that board for coach of the year. If they beat the jets or if they beat the chargers, excuse me, on Monday night, you might see Robert Sala, like four to one coach of the year. I, I we don't want to chase bad numbers, but man, I mean, yeah. you line those three coaches up right now, McDaniel, uh, Campbell and Sala. Sala has done much more than those two guys. And he has a lot less to work with. Yeah, seventeen to one. I, I had a thumb through on my preseason NBA win totals uh, that, that and, play, and uh, awards markets to to get back down. It, it does. It it does feel like though the Jets. I mean, they they got very lucky to win that game this past weekend. They got like, lucky to win every game. Like, there's a there's a case. So with the Giants last year, that it's just like I don't know. And, and and the Falcons were close to being that team. I think and not anymore. Uh, it just feels like they're they, at some point this year could all implode. It doesn't change what, what Robert Sala has done, but I mean, you're not going to win many games continually the way they have been winning many games continually. It's just not the way that it's works not sustainable the, is what you're season. saying. I agree. It, yes. It doesn't take away what Sala has done, but like the end of this giants game, like if cave on Thibodeau doesn't jump off sides, the clock runs and they never get opportunity to even click a field goal, right? It's one more play, Hail Mary, game over, right? Like there's little things in that, it, you know, if 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 they don't let Alan Lazar just get up off the ground, they let him literally catch the football in that final play and just get up, just lay on him for two seconds. Make the official come over and pull you off of him. Game's right. over. Like there's all these little things that happen where it's like the, the wins are great. And I, I like that they're battling, they're playing hard, all those things are true. But come on, I mean, they, they very easily could be two and seven right now. They very, they very easily could be, but they're not. I know they're, they're in the thick of the playoff race. Optimus if they win, if they win this week, it's Aiden O'Connell next week. I mean, that's you could qu- you could quietly oh, yeah. sneak your way to six and three if you could ever win this week, and then you give yourself some cushion before the schedule gets tough. You do have uh, Bills and Dolphins after that, but then Falcons, Texans, uh, Commanders, the Browns. Who knows the Patriots? Oh, wow, there's a path for nine there. Nine. I don't know if nine de- in, definitely in, gets in, you in. It doesn't necessarily, but it's look, there. Oh, look, 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 no, Bears getting. And, look at and this there. is why we were so high on him with Aaron I before know. the year, Will, because we yep. knew that. Way the schedule was backloaded, and if they could just get out of the first six games, two and four, or three and three, like they, there was a, they, they were going to win ten games still, the, and that's why the, it the, the, killed me week one. There's just no chance the Chargers even win this game, right? They're not going to on the road outside <laughs> in New York and winning this game. Right? Like, there's just no, ch- there's no chance. Damn, like, I think I you should make a bold prediction. Are- is this game going to be tied with four minutes to go, or is this game going to be tied with four minutes to go? <laughs> The Chargers will be down three with two minutes to go. We all know. I thought about this the other day. We've all had that phone charger in our lives that, like, doesn't really work. But then if you angle it a certain way or you bend it, you can get a little charge. Like, that's that franchise. They're just a broken phone charger that, like, it calibrates every once in a while. The the quarterback has so much talent. But then he's zipping 90-mile-an-hour fastballs into triple coverage, like, with the game on the line. It's just... It has to be maddening to be a Chargers fan because they have so much talent, especially on offense, but they just continuously stub their toe. And it's not like one or two years of this. This is like 15 years of this going back to like Sean Merriman and Rivers and all those teams <laughs> with Tomlinson and Michael Turner. Like this has been the story for 15 years where they're just, they're so stacked with the talent and it just, it doesn't come through. If they don't fire Staley soon, 
they're going to be jumped by the Raiders for Harbaugh. Like, like, like they need to get on this fast before point. Harbaugh. Because Harbaugh, really I, Harbaugh in Los Angeles with Herbert would be incredible. Harbaugh has won everyone in San Diego. He won at Stanford. He won in San Francisco. He's won in Michigan. Yeah. Like he will be the Raiders head coach, in my opinion, if they don't if they don't jump the Raiders to get in line for his services. Who the hell's betting Giants? Giants Raiders this week, by the way. You mentioned Aiden O'Connell getting the start there. They're the Raiders cleaning house, the head coach, offensive coordinator, GM. I'm sort of curious new. for the Antonio Pierce Raiders, but they're just not a very talented football team. It doesn't matter if the new coach, I don't think it matters very much. They're just not good. Jeff, by, oh. Jeff, you mentioned Harbaugh to the Raiders, and we talked about it a little on the college pod. Is, is Harbaugh, like, isn't he smart enough to say, hey, I, I have my pick of jobs here. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in a division with Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert. Like, you got to get a quarterback, not go against the quarterbacks. Like, the Charger job, I certainly understand the appeal, but do you really yeah. want to go take the Raider job against Mahomes? Well, look, it, it all depends, obviously, on what jobs open up. And I think for, for Harbaugh, a couple of things will be important. And one is the personnel control, right? I think he's going to want personnel control. And I think Mark Davis will give him the personnel control. Like, that's part of, like, in San Diego, Los Angeles, I'll never stop calling that. You know, is Telesco gone, too? Because the roster is pretty good there, right? And 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 so I don't know if he's going to want to go somewhere that someone else is choosing the players for him. I, I think that would be important for him. Um, and then also, like, Chicago, I know we joke about that, but Kevin Warren, is, is he going to hire Jim Harbaugh? Like, that might not be even a place for, for Jim to go. So you look out west and you say, look, I can go to Los Angeles with Justin Herbert, potentially, and Harbaugh's a competitive dude. He don't he doesn't care about Kansas City. He can't, like, you, 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 you're familiar like, with his ego, aren't you? What? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm just saying, like, I just know what he's going to want as an NFL head coach. It's why he's been close to going with Minnesota, going to other teams, and they probably tell him, like, yeah, we're not giving you player control. So you're just not going to get that job. And so if he, I think he looks at it as saying, look, I can have Justin Herbert. Uh, maybe I don't have player control. Maybe I do. But he don't, he, he's competitive enough where he does not care about the division. And if the Raiders give him personnel control and no one else will, he'll choose the Raiders. Do we yeah. know that, that Stafford is definitely... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Finish up on this stuff. No, no. I, I was just agreeing with Jeff. Like, look, if you tell me I get to coach Herbert, absolutely. If you told me I'm coach the Raiders, uh, man, that's a that's a tough spot. But yeah, go ahead. Do we are we know do we know for sure that Stafford is definitely out this week? Mm -hmm. I mean, we could assume, right? You want to lay three and a half with Green Bay? Like, I, I would uh, take the Rams plus three and a half. Is there with, backup? Is it? It, Ripping, is it, is I think it still, it, it's not Wolford. It's not Wolford no. anymore. And, and it's not, it's not, it's, it's, it's not the, it's Brett Rippin. Brett Rippin. Okay. I take the Rams plus three and a half with, with Rippin. The Packers are broke. Yeah. Packers are terrible. No, nah, their defense is 27th in DVOA. They're not a good football team. Like, could that be a sneaky job that opens up? Maybe where they cut the cord with LaFleur this, this quickly. You think? He's got enough Jeff wins banked. Where I don't offensive. think so. I, I don't think so. Maybe next year he's on the hot seat, but I, he's got he's got a pretty gaudy win loss record. You can say, hey, it's because of Rodgers, but I I don't know. I don't sense that, but it's possible. They keep their coaches forever in Green yeah. Bay. Like they keep them too yeah. long. If, yeah. Like they kept, you know, Holmgren, and then was it Mike Sherman, and then uh, McCarthy was there forever. McCarthy won a Super Bowl in what 2010, and he was there like last week. It felt like. Um, <laughs> I got a stink bomb for the boys here. How about this total? This won't be popular by any means because when we look at Washington and New England, nobody wants to bet that over. But without Chase Young and Montez Sweat, New England is going to have all day to throw the ball. And I, I think that, like, we can quantify how much guys are worth on the D line. Like, all right, you know, Sweat's worth a point. Maybe Chase Young is worth a point and a half. But I think it's harder to do that with totals. And we've seen this thing get steamed. It was 39 a couple days ago. Then they traded both of these guys, Sweat and Young. The total is now 40 and a half. There are some 41s offshore. I think Mac Jones is actually going to have a good game this week. And that doesn't mean he's good. It doesn't mean he's going to the Pro Bowl or the Patriots are fine. But in a vacuum, <laughs> New England should have one of its best passing games of the season against a depleted Washington D-line without two of its best players. And I don't think the guys you're going to bring in to start in place of those two departed guys are going to be up to speed or ready or prepared. You know, New England over two and a half team touchdowns, over New England team total, uh, over 40 and a half. As we've discussed, these totals are low, but you get a couple you know, big plays. It's going to go over no matter what. 
I think the move on that total over is extremely real. Washington's going to get no pressure in New England's backfield. And New England might be able I to like, run the ball. Yeah, I like that a hell of a lot more than, than laying three and a half with the Patriots. That's for sure. I I, I I like. I'm gonna have to add that to the shopping cart, as you say. Who, who is who, who is playing wide receiver for the Patriots? Like, who is Mac Jones throwing the ball to? Stanley Morgan. I'm just like. I'm just curious. Like, Juju like, Irving Fryer. I, I look. I, I I I hate to admit I wanted Juju back on the Chiefs. I was hoping the Chiefs would would trade for him, but nonetheless, like he doesn't have anyone to throw the ball to. I, th- that's my thing. Is like, yeah, it sounds great. They can't get a pass rush, but who who is he delivering the ball to? Like, I I, did, I don't know who, who those guys are going to be this week. I mean, they didn't have guys to begin with. Oh, cool. not, I didn't think Devontae Parker was all that great. Kendrick Bourne's a big loss for them at receiver. He uh, blew his knee out. But yeah. I think you're going to see you're going to see a lot of you know two tight end sets. You're going to see Hunter Henry and yep. Farrell Brown out there. And and I think you know the extension of the Farrell. passing game is that you know that dump off game to Ramondre and maybe you get yeah. Zeke going. I, I think a lot of things work in their favor if they can run the ball. You can pass to pretty much anybody. You can pass to me at wide receiver if you can run the ball, but. I think that's a big, big advantage for New England in the trenches. And they've been dominated the last month or so. They've just been clobbered on their offensive line. So yeah. that'll be something to pay attention to this weekend. One other thing about Washington is that you basically signaled that you're quitting them on this season by training those guys. Obviously, the players are going to play hard. Rivera's going to coach hard. But I wonder if that kind of is deflating going into playing New England like they, obviously, the coaches wanted to keep him. The report, I mean, look, Ron Rivera wants to keep his job, right? He wants to keep those players in the building. They trade them anyways. They're telling you, like, you're not having this job next season. You're, you're out of a job. <laughs> and your players there, I mean, you feel that too. I played in a bad team, a 2-14 and 14 Panthers team. They told everyone, we don't want you here next year. And, like, it's deflating to try to play the next week after they basically tell you, like, you're – you're not back next season. So I do wonder if there's a little bit of emotional letdown for Washington. Um, and also Sam Howell just tends to be up and down each week. He's playing against a Belichick defense. So I think it's a good, it, it would be a good spot for New England just emotionally considering what Washington went through this week. It, that was my biggest concern with like a lot of these sides with these teams that were involved in all these trades. Like it almost, it looks like easy to want to fade them. But now you're saying actually it's real in the locker room. I think for Washington, the other teams not like the Bears aren't going to magically be good because Montez Sweat is on the roster. Like they're not going to play better in New Orleans for that reason. But I do think for Washington specifically, that's still in in their minds a playoff caliber team, like a wild card, obviously not a division winner. Um, but and you trade away the two best defensive players, like what you do actually well at times is rush the passer. And you're like, yeah, we're 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 done with those guys. We're we're moving on. It's going to be deflating for them. Got New Orleans five and a half to eight and a half. You can have yeah, you can have it. That, that, that ain't, I don't think that's stopping at eight and a half either, Sammy. Don't you think? I, there ain't a chance in hell I can lay eight and a half with the Saints. Oh, this will be. I mean, I, I haven't talked to him yet, but this is bartender special. You know, Chicago just lost Sunday night. Now they go off the road. <laughs> this is like, you know, he's a very two plus two guy. You know, two plus two is four. And he he did text me. He's like, wow, the Bears suck. So that, I mean, that does sort of line up. But to your point, I mean, we deal with numbers, not perception. And I, I can't wrap my head around it, Will. I'm not laying eight and a half with a team that scores 21 points per game. It's just, it's not going to happen ever. Yeah, I'm not taking it, though. I mean, Badgett on the road, that's a loud dome. I, I, I mean, we can talk about the Saints because like, I, I don't think there's some great team, but I did lay minus 150 for them to make the playoffs. If you just start to go through the teams with Cousins getting hurt, with Stafford getting hurt, like it's hard to get to seven teams. I don't love the Saints team, but with that schedule, they should probably get to nine wins. Uh, if I had to take it away, I would probably lay it with the Saints. I just think they could win a, you know, I don't know, 27, mm. 17 type of game. I think the best way to play this, though, obviously, throw the Saints in a teaser with, I don't know, Cleveland. Uh, is Clayton Toon on the road in Cleveland against that defense off a terrible, just a brutal <laughs> loss for the Browns? Is Clayton Toon, uh, uh, you know, going to do anything against that defense? So, I don't know, Brown Saints teaser sounds pretty good to me. By the way, we, we keep saying Browns defense. We know they have a lot, a lot of points the last two weeks. Yeah, right? we have. Like, yeah. like, in, it's, it's like, in, true. like, they, like, they've been good, but they allowed a lot of points to Gardner Minshew, and then they let Seattle just march on the field on them uh, all day. It was, it was a short field after a flukish interception, and they did. 
early 17 point first quarter, didn't allow a point until that final drive. So they, they played count. well. The, the points all count at the end, though. Yes, like, they do all count, but it wasn't like they allowed sure. 40 points to Gardner Minshew right. two weeks in a row. Fair, but but the thing is, like, if you're the, if your defense is that good, I know it's a short field at the end, at the end, but you you shut it down, right? right? Like that's your like you're that good. You should. I just think the Browns' defense, the talking point, was fun for a while, but it seems like they're not as good as they have been. But we, but, but will we? But clean two doesn't matter. It's clean. But we've joked. We, we Sammy and jokes about the Chargers with their the way our, every Chargers game go. Will we've talked about this as well with the with the Cardinals. Every Cardinals game is the same thing. They'll come out, they'll play well for a quarter, quarter and a half, and the second half they just get absolutely boat raced. That Ravens Cardinals game last week, the final two minutes is a, is a perfect example of like what the hell are we doing <laughs> on this sport? Because I mean, there's. Um, you know, there was a two point conversion and it gets called back with a penalty. Then there's a missed field goal, but there's a penalty on that. I mean, there was just seven or eight different occasions where it's like you won, you lost, you won, you lost. And you, at the end, you just, you know what, you don't even, it, it, sometimes just teasing these games is better. Cause if you had the Ravens in a teaser, you're not sweating. If you had the Cardinals or the Ravens plus the points, it's just flip a coin and whatever w- way it lands is how the game goes. But yeah, Arizona reminds me, I think it was two years ago. The lions were kind of like this where they weren't good, but they would cover a lot. They'd be in a lot of games, Arizona either covers or they're close to covering um i think they've covered what four or five games they had the, the 49er game where they dropped the cover in the end zone they were close to covering against seattle so they're they're in the mix of covering they just man they won that one game against dallas that's a long time ago this team is one and seven and i don't know what they do with murray going forward i don't know what the point of bringing him back is in, in getting to you know two three maybe four wins i think this is a team that's uh you know looking at a pick here so it'll be interesting to see how the rest of the season plays out well don't 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 get the four wins. Four wins would not make the gambling. I'd appreciate that at too. All. Yes, we, 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 we need that under under three and a half. So uh, on that positive note, along with Jets optimism, we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll call it a week. Hopefully, we'll be a, a winning one. And Sammy, as always, please let us know when the uh, the bartender is uh, please is, 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 has poured one for us all. Take care, guys. Have a great week. Always fun to have the weekly check in with our with our guys there uh, in Kicka. A bunch of stuff around. I'm, I'm, I, 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 I want. I'm so. I, I was just gonna say. I am so passionate about that. I, it's like I almost like am rooting against all these quarterbacks now because I, I want the best player to be He's good, the man. MVP. And and he he. Is, I think this. I think it's the first year I felt in a while that there's a legit opportunity for a wide receiver to win. MVP. It's, it's like every week. It's like, and I know I just made the case for Burrow, so I may be guilty as well, but. Every week, it's like, oh, it's this quarterback. It's that quarterback. It's allowed to not be a quarterback. Correct. It's possible for the most valuable player to not be a quarterback. Absolutely. Especially in a year where quarterback play has kind yeah. of been down and, and I, production has been down. The only, the, only, the only thing, the only drawback I have for the Tyreek Hill wager, this is the only thing I have to say, and I hate having to reference this all the time, but like the injury thing with Tua, He's got to, to me, if he makes it through a whole year without being injured this year, that drops. The injury tag drops. But he's got to make it through the season, right? Mm-hmm. Like he has to make it through the season before you can say that you can start kind of saying that. But that does, the only thing that worries me about that is is that part of this of this wager. Uh, but we have Survivor to do, Bear. So I'm still alive. I think you're still alive. I mean, I'm survive. I'm, I'm alive in one that I'm, and I split with the buddy of mine. Okay. And uh, we did use the Chargers last week, which was. Pretty much straightforward. It feels. I used to charge us two last week. It feels like we're going to get a get an upset this week. I, 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 I we, we've we've kind of gone a couple of weeks now. I think without a big one, feels like the time might be right. And I think you got some candidates this week. Is you got the Saints who are going to be one of the top picks, and and we kicked that around. The, there isn't a chance in hell I'm trusting the Saints. Really? No. Against the bad I know. Bears? I mean, even against the bad bear. They, 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 Sammy, you, you hit trust on. the Browns over the Cardinals? Yes, that's my top play. I I just the Cardinals we we hit on that every game has gone the same yeah, way. Yeah, they're they're not. They're just not deep. The talent isn't there. Uh, the, the, the Saints offense just goes into too many lulls, and they find themselves. And they shouldn't have. And they shouldn't even cover last week in the Cardinals like that. That was they, they needed a late touchdown, right. an onside oh, yeah. kick, yep. a field goal down ten yep. with five well, with, with yeah, forty yeah. seconds left to cover that game. Will Will was doing a very good job of uh, living through that. Yes, uh, for us. Um, get Atlanta, and we both hit on. I like Atlanta, and I don't trust. Or rather, I don't Minnesota. like. I don't. I like Minnesota. I don't trust Atlanta at all against Atlanta. that defense. I tread carefully there, and then I think 
Cleveland after blowing that game in Seattle. Maybe I'm not laying eight and a half or whatever the number is, but you need a wing. You get one of the worst teams in the league at home with, with a guy making his first start in Clayton Toon. Like, hit on the Cardinals game. Yeah. Like, how, how we know how the game is going to go. Yep. I, 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 took the, I took the Browns here. And if you're looking to roll the dice, maybe you don't have one of those teams available. Maybe you're looking to be contrarian and thinking that maybe one or two of those teams are going to lose. Sammy P kind of alluded to it. The Patriots would be a team to yeah. maybe look at. And you with Washington losing Sweat and losing Chase Young, you you said you you mentioned about a team that yeah, kind of a little de- deflated. It in, yeah, a little, little deflated. deflated. Yeah. It's not like that Patriots offense is great, but they could look yeah. very good against that new look Washington defense. So if you're looking to roll the dice, but top pick Cleveland, risk reward pick New England, because you're never going to use the Patriots again. And New Orleans. You're going to use New Orleans? I'm not. I'm gonna take the Browns. I don't I think New Orleans, I think they're okay. deep. The thing about New Orleans is their defense is good still. And their defense is not going to let the Bears score enough points. Like Carr, Carr is good enough to win this game, I think, for the Saints. Mm. I'm not doing. I'm going to take the Browns. I'm going to take your advice. It's been going well for us. Okay, for me. But uh, yeah, I, I I would not. Yeah, I mean, we're, I, we're going to be on the Browns and the one that I'm. Yeah. I no, I took the Browns right now. I have to do this in New York. I have to no. go home and I have to do. I have to do it while I'm here. So you live in an awful state uh, until Jan- January January fourth or 4th, June, possibly or June. Depends. Depends. No, our state. Our mm-hmm. state will be. It'll be June. Our state. Let's talk about the two bets you made so far. In the show, before we get to our best bet, you have the Panthers plus three at home against the Colts, the Falcons. Excuse me. I keep saying the Falcons. I hate the Falcons. Why would I mention the Falcons? <laughs> they're, the, they're, they're the one team, by the way, that they're, they're like my team that I just, I never wager on. I never win the wager. The Falcons, you have the, Vi- the Vikings plus five against the Falcons. All right, Bear. Best bet time. We're in the same boat on this one. You can go first. I have played the the one with the Chiefs. I mean, you can just play money line if you if you want as well. We'll see if that narrative changes with the Dolphins, where they just tend to get beaten up by the good teams and and, and beat up on the bad teams. Dead game in Denver last week was just weird. No offensive touchdowns, turnovers. Mahomes with the flu. You didn't think after yeah. that performance last week things will be different here. That was, uh, I believe I heard the stat, that was the worst game the Chiefs offense had played under Mahomes, the EPA-wise. Like, that was the worst game he had played. Um, I'm also on the Chiefs, by the way. Um, Chiefs defense is still pretty good, by the way. So. Chiefs defense is fantastic. They, they they give the most points they had all season, but that was a lot of short fields. That, yeah. they, allowed, they allowed points. Um, and here's about Kansas City, and obviously I'm a Chiefs fan. I try to avoid wagering them as much as possible, but this is a spot where, you know, I don't trust them to cover big spreads at Denver. I trust them to cover a game when, when they care, and they're going to care about this game. They're going to care about this game. George, the Georgia Bulldogs of the NFL. They're going to, and when you play as bad as they played on offense last week, it wasn't just the wide receivers. Mahomes had some errors. The offensive line didn't block terribly well. Um, we get the best performances of the Chiefs after a loss like that and when they care about trying to win a game. I'm not saying they don't care about trying to win, but you get like the best game plans against the Dolphins. You get the best game. This is going to be the best of what the Chiefs do is to be on this place. I'm not even wagering on them because of the Dolphins, you know, get pushed around type of thing, right? But the Dolphins have injuries on the offensive line still. Defensively, they're sort of, you know, like that, that late, I mean, not the late interception, but the interception that Ramsey had slowed down another Patriots drive. That was a bet. Mahomes not making that throw. So, I just need the Chiefs to win, basically. Chiefs to win this game. Um, I'll take it. And the Chiefs go into a buy after this, too. So they can, I think we're going to get our full, like, Chiefs effort in this All game. All in, yeah. All in. And uh, just stop dropping passes. Come on, Rashid Rice. Catch Sky Moore. Catch the football. That's all we need. We, we need him to catch the football, Bear. Does that concern you? So, well, the wide receiver, yeah. So it, it, the wide receiver room does concern me. They obviously didn't make a trade. I would have actually just taken Juju back. That's what they missed. They missed the 78 catches and 100 targets of Juju. Rashid Rice is good. He's going to be the guy. Um, he's has to stop. He has to catch the football. I mean, like that's that he dropped another big pass in that game. Um, he's the guy that has to come through. Juju said last year it took him ten weeks to figure out sort of where to be in the offense. It's week eight. Like maybe Rice picks it up by week twelve. You know, is, is a young player. He's the guy. If Rice becomes the player that the talent has shown, then I think he becomes that answer for the Chiefs. Okay, that's yeah. what. I, that was my question. Can that uh, that wide receiver room as constructed, can that lead them to a Super Bowl? Yes. I need to see more improvement still, but I think I buy me the improvement happens. I mean, look around the roster. All the young players are 
play well. Like they, the entire defense secondary is all young football players, mm-hmm. right? Like I think they they know what they're doing with the draft. Sky Moore didn't hit. That's obviously didn't happen. But there's we're, Rishi Rice has played eight games. Like he's, mm-hmm. I think he'll be fine. He's shown what he can do. So we're both on the Chiefs, everyone. What could go wrong? Exactly. Nothing. Yeah, right. <laughs> if it can go wrong, it will. That's, that's the motto of this 2023 and football season. Before we get out of here, I want to remind you guys, not too late to play the free Fox Super 6 game for week nine. Just download the Fox Sports app right now and make your picks for a chance to win your share of $10,000 in weekly cash prizes. Colin will be up, foxsports.com. Look at cross-promotion. Look at that. A little, little advice to help you along there and love it. maybe make some, uh, some, for, some free cash. Curious... Yeah, a lot, lot, lot of focus on Cowboys, Eagles, and the Super Six this week. I noticed that, unsurprisingly, one of the boxes game of the week, one of the better games of the week. Yeah. Speaking of the week, the week is over. You know, n- n- another one in the it's already, books. It's already week ten in college football. Week nine, yeah, in, the week nine in the NFL. Crazy. Doing playoffs before we. Uh, we're before we where your there. Jets will be. So perfect. Oh, stop it! <laughs> Wouldn't shock me if they won Monday night, though. For Jeff, for Will. Sammy, appreciate everybody again for downloading, listening, subscribing, Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, make sure you subscribe to that YouTube channel too, if you want to get a, get a shot of me uh, with the with, with, with the paper whip for Breeders' Cup picks in my, in, in my hand as well. And remember, unless you bet, you more you lose when you win. <laughs>